Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this time together and bless us as we finish up this series. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Good. Zachary and Elizabeth. Okay. What about them? <laughs> they were in the Bible. They were, they were in the Bible. <laughs> oh, this is on Herod. That's right. why I'm here. Yeah, but Zachary and Elizabeth, he's, tell me. He's he's high priest. Or okay. Roman. High priest. And and she was related to all of the inn people. That's all right. the inn people. And, and she was there. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Okay. yes. Okay. Son. Yes. John the Baptist. Baptist. Good. Did you tell me about John the Baptist. He baptized. Last of the Old baptized. Yes. Last Very of the Old Testament well. prophets, according to Matthew and Mark. Matthew and Mark. But according to John, he was the first. First of the first of the the <laughs> New Testament, and then Luke, kind of that period in between. Okay. Okay. They couldn't get okay. the story straight. Could should have should have met at dinner like Putin. And yeah, well, I want to do oh, Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's um uh Mary and Joseph? Yeah. 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 Mary the mother of Okay, mother of yeah. Uh where do we find Mary? On every statue in the castle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in, in Luke. Luke. Luke is, a, is where we see Mary. We find Joseph. In the Middle East. He was the same place. Uh, right? No. He was in, and, and, well, in Matt, primarily in Matthew. Matthew's story focuses on Joseph. Uh, Luke's story focuses on Mary. Okay. So we've 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 done that. That's what we've looked at. Okay. okay round the round the manger. Now we're going to be looking at the Magi, and well, actually we're going to look at a bunch of kings. Um, and when you think about the Magi, what comes to mind? Just without looking at the yes. Bible, what are some things that come to mind when you think about the kings? You know, the one I know astronomy. Was okay, astronomy because star stars. Day. Okay, what else comes to mind? Myrrh, gold, gold. and incest. Myrrh, yes. gold, and, and incest. <laughs> incest. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so um, the... Um, Such a John answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> I apologize. That's all right. I stepped on your line. You took it uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a, what else comes to mind? Traveling. Traveling comes line. to mind, you know, camels and, and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. They killed How children. How many? How many? Three. Three, of course. We oh, three. Because, you know, we sing about it. We Magic three kings. Numbers. Yes. All right. We three yeah. kings of so, Orient so are. So is that what their name is, the Magi? Yeah. The Magi. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the word Magi Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Kings. We're going to talk about it in okay. just a little bit. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. Okay. Uh, the um, idea of that you, you got three. And, of course, bec because we want to be... Inclusive. Nice, nice prime yeah, one is black. Black. Yeah. One is uh, Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern uh, could be Oriental. Yeah. Or you know, he was sort of the miscellaneous Persian one, Persian. and the other it's one. Arab, it's Persian. Looks. Western Europe. You know, kind of. Yeah. You know, like a Viking. Yeah. You know, kind of a blonde-headed guy. Yeah. You know, ours when we had it out front, the uh, the white guy. That's what I call him, white guy. He kept on falling over. Yes. You know, because I, I, and I think, he and the Arab guy got in the fight. You know, and he, he would always be over. Or I told one, and I shouldn't have told it to, he, he was too young. I said, the uh, one of the kings has a drinking problem. <laughs> and tends to pass out. Uh, because he'd be... Yeah. Fall, you know, he would fall over, and fortunately, somebody propped him against the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the little thing. thing. Yeah. So <laughs> even though he didn't fall, he was going to lean it. <laughs> so travel the farthest. Yes, that's right. Yeah. We three yeah. kings of yeah. leaning hard. Okay, so we're going to look at we're going to look at that. Now that's interesting because some of these assumptions are going to be right, and others are going to be just cultural things that develop for varied and sundry reasons. So what we're going to do like we did with the others is we're going to look at what you know what the, the scripture says uh, about these folks. Okay now if if we look at the story of the the kings and I'm going to call them kings until we define magi a little bit. Uh, kings and, and Herod this is a story only found do you know where this story is found? Matthew. It's only found in one place. Only found in Matthew. Not mentioned anywhere else at all. Not in Luke, not in Mark, not in John. Paul doesn't mention it. The, the evangelist John does. Found nowhere else in the New Testament, nowhere else in the Bible, except in the Gospel of Matthew. Now, why might, why might that be important? 
You know, one of the things I encourage you all to do is, is allow each of the Gospels to speak for itself, not include other stuff from around. Why might it be important that this, this story of the kings is only found in one, one book? Is that because, Herod, is that because of the killing of the first story? Well, you know, it's really interesting because old man Herod is only found. In one book, except a reference in uh, in Luke for timing purposes, but as a as a character that does anything, he's only mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew. So what what might that? How might that um, shape how you approach this story? Well, if it's only in Matthew, it gives you a time frame. Okay, gives you a time frame. Time frame becomes kind of interesting too, and, and gives you the status of kings. Okay. A little bit about the status of kings, okay? Um, let's we'll talk about kings in just a little bit. With with time frame it becomes kind of interesting, because Herod, historical person, uh, but he died in in the year probably somewhere around the year four B.C., which means Herod died before Jesus. Before Jesus, or right before Jesus. Before Jesus, Jesus was born, right? Yeah. Huh. Which means year one may be a little off. Maybe a little bit off. If this story is historically accurate. Yeah, uh, but how do you know that? Herodotus or where? Where do you get the facts Josephus. On? Josephus. 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 4 BC. Most of what, most of what, well, it, it, because he's linking it, he's not saying 4 BC, but he's linking it to other events that are happening in, in the area. So Herod is, is gone before. Uh, the the church or or the Western world set the coming of Christ, which makes it kind of interesting because if all of this is historical, if this has a historical basis, uh, then Jesus, if Jesus were crucified again, the crucifixion marked by other things like when Pilate was governor and yada yada yada. Instead of Jesus being a young man uh, in his early thirties. He becomes An older man. a much older man in his late thirties, you know, which in the cult time becomes a fairly significant difference. So he's not this young guy, you know, this kind of brass and going around, but but somebody who is who is mature. older, more mature, may have gray in his beard, yes. could have gray in his beard, yeah, might so, be a little bit bald on uh, Could be, <laughs> could have thinning hair, you know. Um, so anyway, so we've got, but it's only found in the Gospel of Matthew, also tells us that this is a story that Matthew is going to use for his theology, that even if they, they the, the other evangelists didn't, either didn't know it, uh, which means it wasn't one that had broad circulation, or they didn't see it as essential to establish who Jesus is. But Matthew did. Saw it as important. So that's, that's going to tell us a lot, I think, about how Matthew sees Jesus and how Matthew wants us to see Jesus. And that's really how we approach all the Gospels. What does, what does the evangelist want us to see when we look at Jesus? What does he consider important about who the Christ is? You know, none of them are trying to get give some objective historical lesson. It's how do we see this figure of faith, okay? And so this may tell us that Matthew's perspective is is going to be a little different than the others. The one of kings. What's that? He's trying to give perspective ah, on the one of kings. Okay, good. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But that's a great observation because that's that's exactly where he's going. What did you just say? He wants you to visualize Jesus as a king. As a perspective, from a kingly perspective. Okay, just again as background, uh, we got Magi mentioned, and uh, the in Greek it's Magoi, that's the, the Greek word, which means there's more of them, that's the plural for, for Magi. Now, what, who were, does anybody know who the Magi were? what a magi is. I mean, this is a group. These are on proper names. There were a lot of magi. So it's it's not like well, they're only... They'd be a leader or something. Okay, they're, they're, they're a leader. They Or they have influence well, well, in they society. they have to be some kind of leader because they bring in pretty expensive... Guests. Okay, so they have... They're influential in, in their... 
uh, in their in their culture. Intellectual scholars. Okay. There. Uh, now, good. So we're talking about people who are scholars. Where? Privileged. Okay. Where would they? So they where would they have in been? In where Persia. would they have lived? Persia. Persia. Okay, in Persia, which is called Parth the Parthian Empire. You know. So and and they were followers of the religion that was that dominated ancient Persia and the Parthian Empire. Solid. Which was called Zoroastrianism. 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 And Zoroastrianism still exists. That's why they love the Yes, still exists in Persia. Uh, but once the Muslim conquest, it becomes a secondary religion. And Zoroastrianism is, has a has what comes close to monotheistic view, although you have two gods that are contenders. So you have the good god and the bad god, and the good god and the bad god are constantly do. struggling. Well, we do too. It, well, it, you know, in, in a sense. That's what some people have suggested. Zoroastrianism predates Christianity. S some people have suggested the the role of Satan becomes this yeah, uh, in, in, right except in Christianity as is presented in Scripture there's really no conflict right. because the God God is supreme over Satan but in Zoroastrianism there is this conflict between good and evil this constant struggle and God is the the symbol of fire becomes really really important in Zoroastrianism. Uh, Zoroastrian, just like ancient people, but the, the, the Romans, this is characteristic of the Romans and the Egyptians. Uh, astrology, astrology becomes really important. Now, why would astrology be really important? To, to learned people. Now, well, your, uh, Gene is entirely right. These are learned, these are the learned people of, of the day. Too, I would say. You know, why would astrology be so? We, you know, we look at astrology and it's, you know, what you call on the phone. When, you so know, simplest form here, they're <laughs> agriculturalists, so you okay. know, it's very important to know what time of the year. It is. Okay, and the astrologer could do that. Yes, could could tell you what time of year to do, plant. Yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. so you could go to the astrologer and what what time of year well, do you plant? Predict well, you you could predict things just like you know you could predict that weather was going to get warmer and becomes now. To what do they attribute this this awareness? Because they are able to predict. They they are able to read the seasons. What what then becomes an assumption that lies behind that ability to read the seasons? Position of the stars. Yes, you've got you've got God, the good God, giving signals, right? Okay. And the signals are given through. Through through stars, a lot of things. Through um, stars are one, you know. Uh, uh, through, what's that? Comets. Through comets. Anything well, and and any a lot of things physical, no, you know, because are. they you know would would slaughter animals and interpret the entrails of of animals, or they would interpret you know whether an eagle is resting here or whether uh, you know a crow is there. They were really attuned to the, their natural environment. And and use the signs that they saw. They didn't attribute it to reason, or to a you know sort of a, a Aristotelian kind of uh, 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 analysis. But they were aware enough that there were certain natural signs. You know, when the sparrows come back from to Capistrano, that meant spring was coming. That meant something yeah, important was happening. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that, that's <laughs> what they. And so they could see the signs in nature, including the signs in the stars. And so they were very they, attuned to that. And they still can. My yes. Vet, they still do. My vet used to tell me, I don't know if anybody else, to, my dog used to have seizures, and he would always say, keep an eye on her when there's a full moon. Mm -hmm. Because they would tend to, and it was kind of scary. I'd be like checking the calendar, like, oh, geez, what's well, the moon? Hey, ask any school teacher. Yeah, that's you not ask any school teacher when kids are yeah. are most active. Lord yeah. have mercy. So, but they could read the signs, and so they assumed every, the gods or God was communicating through these natural things. 
you know, kind of a pre-rational time. And the stars become incredibly important. Now, Matthew knows this. Matthew believes this as he's reading, writing about the Magi. So the Magi, were, they were Persian. There were a whole bunch of them, you know, because that's what they did. They were advisors because they were smart, just like the prophets were the ones who knew the law. You know, they were the ones who knew the law in Israel, so they were advisors to the king. You know, they were important people. Okay, so a little background on Magi. What about Herod? What do you know about King King Herod? And he is called Herod the Great. Okay, he was, a, he was appointed by the... What's that? He has a casino. He has a casino. He did. <laughs> he Actually, that's really good because Herod the Great was big. He was I, great at doing one thing. I think people. it's. I think well, he was good at killing people. Yeah, he was kids. great at doing something else. They all did that. He was, it, but the one, the one that has a casino says great, 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 great grandson. Oh. Well, <laughs> I think you added one too many great. Okay. okay, but Herod. Herod was great at doing one thing. He was please, good at killing please, people, please, but he was really a good. Maniac admiring himself. Well, uh, yeah, that, that may be true, please but, Roman. but he, he, he Herod was a great builder. He was a great builder. In, in fact, uh, in fact, when the uh, the temple was destroyed, you know, when the the Babylonians conquer. Uh, Jerusalem. One of the things, of course, they do is they destroy the temple because the temple can be a place where people gather, gather and unite for resistance. Mm -hmm. You know, so you destroy the temple. You just destroy the city walls so you can't descend, defend yourself. You destroy the temple so you don't have any focus. So that's what they did. Well, when they return, Nehemiah and Ezra return, they build a new temple. But these were these were really poor people. You know, coming out of exile, the temple they built was kind of mud. was not yeah, great. Not so nice. Yeah, it was not so nice, but it served a purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, when Herod became king, and we'll talk a little bit more about his background, one of the things he decided to do was, by gum, he was going to he was going to build a new temple. You know that, and the temple Herod builds is going to be bigger than the Temple of Solomon. This is going to be a huge, huge place. And in fact, he starts it, it's not finished during his lifetime. It's like the, the uh, church in Barcelona. It's not finished during his lifetime. In fact, it's not going to be finished until the mid-60s A.D. It's not going to be finished until the mid-60s A.D. So when Jesus is there, it's still under construction. You know, when he's hanging around there, they're still working on it. It's going to be in the in like around 65 A.D. and in 71 A.D. the Romans are going to tear it down <laughs> because the Jews rebel, you know, and the temple is the focus, and that's where the rebel, the people that work in the temple, the Sadducees, are the ones that are instigating. And so when the Romans conquer the city. Jerusalem, the first thing they do tear is down. tear down the, the focus of resistance. And so the, when you talk about, the, when they talk about the Wailing Wall, the Temple mm -hmm. Mount and where the, the wall, that's Herod's Temple. You know, mm -hmm. it, they, it goes back to, the location goes back to Solomon, but this is Herod's construction. Now, if Herod wants to build a temple, is going to build a temple, what does that show you about Herod? He gets a lot of money. Okay, has a lot of money. Yeah. Now, where is he getting his money? From the people. Oh, From the yes, people. Yes. So the people are, are, are paying for, for this food. huge temple yeah. that he's building. Now, it's, it, what's really interesting, though, about Herod <laughs> is, <laughs> is Herod <laughs> builds the temple, but he's not Jewish in terms of his ethnic background. Is he the one that wanted to build the window so he could overlook him? Did that? No, that's going to be that's going to be his grandson. Oh, okay. Okay, but Herod is is not is not Jewish uh, by by ethnicity. He's he's what they called an Edomian. Uh, his ancestors would have gone to a, a tribe called Edom, which is in the Old Testament. But he's not he's not by race, and I don't know, race uh, Jewish. Uh, and so he's not one of God's, God's people, God's chosen people. But he converts to Judaism. 
and decides, now why would a convert to Judaism decide to build a temple? To please the Jews. To please the Jews. You know, because it makes them friendly, you yeah. know, puts them on the, the Jewish side. Now, he ends up becoming king and of Judea because he is one heck of a politician. Right. He is really, really good. Because he's living in a time when, when the Roman Republic is shaky. You know, so we're talking about like 70 B.C. to 50 B.C. Roman Republic is shake, really, really shaky. And you're, they're in a series of civil war. Pompey first, uh, and then later after Julius Caesar, you know, takes power, he's assassinated. Then you've got Augustus and uh, Mark Antony, you know, and Cleopatra in Egypt. All of this is going on. With, and Herod is there, and Herod just has this, he's either really lucky, or he's got this inane sense of who's going to win. And he will shift his uh, allegiances to, to winners. Mm -hmm. So when, when Julius Caesar and Pompey, oh, Julius Caesar is fighting Pompey, uh, uh, Antony, Mark Antony favors Caesar. And so Herod moves into that faction and is rewarded by being made a tetriarch. Uh, tetriarch means a little king, you know, a third of a king. That's what tetriarch means. And so, but when Mark Antony rebels, you know, after Julius Caesar and he's fighting Augustus, Herod will, even though Egypt is right there, would have made sense for Herod to, to side with, with Antony, he's going to side with Augustus in this the next civil war and when Mark Antony loses Augustus rewards him so Herod ends up becoming and, and is made what, what he's called the king of the Jews the Roman Senate makes him the king of the Jews which is king of Judea okay. so he becomes the king this king of Judea even though he's, he's not, not a Jew. Jew. he's not a Jew now the kingdom he replaces is is called Hashemenian. And the Hashemenian kingdom was the one that was formed by the Maccabees. You don't need to know all this. But it was a religious... Not the priests... The no, it was not going to be on the test. <laughs> this was one that was like hyper-Jewish. You know, that stood up to the Greeks. When the Greeks wanted to, you know, uh, corrupt the temple, they stood up. You know, these were the priestly families. And he, the Romans, set him up to replace his kingdom. You know... So Herod needs to what? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. suck up to the Jews. You know, and that's what he does. And he does that by building a temple. He also is the one, and you may have heard this name before, Masada. Oh. He builds Masada. Uh, you know, which is going to become important later. But that's that's Herod's construction. He builds ports. Masada's you know. in the desert. Isn't it? The, Masada is a is a fort in the desert. You know, the so big fortress on top. Of yes. Nobody so knows. yes. So he he does a lot of these well, building he projects. Uh, he's also when he gets older becomes kind of paranoid. Hmm. And he should and, after all the things he did. Well, you know, he Everybody's he doing. he he becomes, you know, he. He reckoned, maybe it's because he recognizes that how he got power uh -huh. was... He was also an egomaniac. Well, he... he, he was it, so involved in himself and everything, me, 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 me. Well, he, he becomes very threatened by because other forces around. Everything. You know, uh, and so, you know, and your, your reign is, as a king within the Roman Empire, is precarious at best. Oh, yeah. And he becomes concerned about his... Help. Sons, mm -hmm. and whether his sons might become one of his sons might become more favorable to the Romans, uh, and so Herod ends up killing three of his sons. You know that that are probably the sharpest sons. Now he's got several wives, so the best. He, you know his sharpest sons he eliminates because they become political threats to him. And so Herod becomes not a, he's not a nice guy. And when yeah. Herod dies, but in a sense Herod was right, because when Herod dies, the Romans take uh, three of his sons and one of his daughters and make them what are called tetriarchs. Okay. They, they don't give them the whole kingdom. They don't make them kings, but give them pieces. And that's right. One of them, the one that gets the best, is, a, is one called Archelaus, Herod Archelaus. And Archelaus just means king. 
So Herod Archelaus gets what Judea, you know, the area around Jerusalem. And he is so incompetent uh -huh. as a tetriarch that the Romans take it away from him and make Judea a Roman province. And so they start sending a governor in. You know, which they don't want to do because that's expensive. Yeah. You know, they'd much rather have a king rule it and then the king just set, pay them taxes yeah. or tribute. <laughs> you don't want to have to collect the garbage. But when you're a province, that's what happens. Yeah. The other boys end up continuing to be tetriarchs. They, and one is in Galilee. You know, that becomes Herod Antipas. And that's the Herod we see most often in the Gospels. They arrest John. And then later, the, his son is Herod Agrippa, and Herod Agrippa has really sucked up to the Romans, and he's given the, the whole kingdom again. He's made a king, and rebels, and they put him down, and it's, it's, that always happens. Anyway, that's a, that's, a, that's a little bit of the history of Herod. Interesting, but what we want to do is we look at, look at Matthew, we want to focus though, on what Matthew's telling us. Because Matthew wants, he's going to tell us what he wants us to know. And he's going to do it in a way that will shape the way we feel. So we want to make sure we don't bring in too much of other stuff, you know, to sort of augment Matthew. We want Matthew to say. Yeah, exactly. Because it's going to change the message Matthew wants us to take. Because they all want us to take a message. Okay, so if you've got your Bibles, yes. Uh, I just, just... Looking down, uh -huh. I just saw Matthew 15. Uh, is, but this is before my son. The Pharisees and scribes came from Jerusalem to Jesus and asked, Why do you, your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they don't wash their hands when they eat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. He washes Listen. his hands 50,000 times a day, and I just saw that, and it just. Oh, I'm sorry, really? Everybody. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just, yeah, just, yeah, that that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So John has a, a problem. He has a phobia. Okay. Like, has, unlike yeah, other people it, that it, sit it, at this it, table. My yeah, aunt Elba, it was the same way. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's called sensibility. Cover your ears and reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Talking dial Yeah. Oh, really? Really? Oh, well, it's, the, go it's going. It's, it's really going. going up, it keeps right? going up. He yeah. Up. He uses flesh. He uses balls. But I'm, the nails are very nice. I'm sorry. Uh, you know. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just saw that. Yes, yes. No, okay. No. All right. Yeah. Now, when we get to chapter two. Uh, and we're going to break this up into little pieces. What's already happened in Matthew by the time we get to chapter 2? Okay, we've got Jesus born. We've got the appearance to Joseph and all. What else has happened that's often overlooked but is going to be really important in Matthew's gospel? As Magi visited the king. Not yet. Not in chapter 2. Chapter 1. What else do we have in chapter 1 that's going to tell us Something about Matthew's perspective that we're going to even see in this story and and carried into the gospel. Do the animals talk on this one? No, okay. no talking animals. In fact, in this, there's no manger. We'll talk about that later. It's a little different, it's even gross. account. So what? What is? How does Matthew start his gospel? Genealogy with a genealogy. Now, all, if all if people. he is, yeah. that's right. He begins his gospel with the genealogy. Luke doesn't get to that until chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Then he gives his genealogy. But Matthew gives it at the very beginning of his gospel. Now, what does that tell you about Matthew? If he's going to give a gene... And well, the genealogy starts with what? Abraham. Starts with Abraham. Okay? What does that tell you? A genealogy that is so boring, it'll make you cry... But he puts it at the very beginning. It's I mean, if I, what's that? It's important. Okay, it's important to it. It's the most important. If thing. I'm if I'm a writer and want somebody to read what I've written, I don't put a genealogy at the beginning, oh, at the beginning. because I'm going to say the guy person is going to do what? Flip I ain't out. reading this. Okay. But it's so important. He leads with the genealogy. It must be important. Why is it? And it starts with Abraham. What is that telling you about Matthew? It's it's telling you that Abraham. Okay, if he's going to be, it's going to be. Judaism is going to play a big role in Matthew. That's going to play a big role. Now, like I said last week, and we're going to see it in this passage, I think Matthew is writing to Jews that aren't particularly literate. 
Because remember, he defines Jewish words, yeah. Yeah. you know, like Emmanuel. He doesn't just drop a man, he's got to tell which means. Well, if you're talking to Hebrew speakers, that's they, a waste of space. They, yeah. they already know it. Well, the genealogy would tell you too, because they must not know the genealogy. They hid that the, the genealogy. This is, but it's important. Okay. Yeah, it's so, important, but they don't know it. They don't know it, right. Okay, so let's look, and I'm going to read this, read it quickly so that we're all on the same page. Well, Chapter 2, know. verses, begin at verse 1. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem, all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah, or the Christ, was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you will come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and, and I understand when it says wise men, it's, it's magi, okay. is, is you, you, the word, Greek word used there, uh, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent, to them, sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. Mm-hmm. When they heard, when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the, over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now, how does Matthew right here introduce his story? What does he do right at the beginning of his story? Who does he introduce right at the beginning? Jesus. He introduces Herod. Right at the beginning, the first thing he does is introduce, introduce Herod. And calls Herod a... King, King, which means, remember, every, every word is precious because papyrus is so expensive. They're not wasting words here. Mm-hmm. So if a word is included, man, Matthew thinks that word is important. So he says Herod and identifies him as a, a king, right? But understand, so make sure his audience knows he's a king, but doesn't go into any other detail. About well, his audience would know is it, know what a king means. Would well, would would know yes, yeah, would know what a king is. Even but he, if, he even if they're illiterate, right? Know that right, he's the right, top kahuti, right. And and when does this happen? Right after Jesus. Okay, right after Jesus is born in Bethlehem of Judea, right, which is going to play a role later, right, in Matthew's account because Bethlehem is. The place where, according to Matthew, this great leader is going to come. Yeah. But uh, historically, they, they don't think they came until much later, right? I mean, isn't there a, a dispute about that? It, it, it was like years later well, before the Magi came. Well, well, we'll get to that. That's okay. a good, hold that because we'll get to it. Um, Okay, so we got them, him introduced. Who else is introduced? We got Jesus' birth introduced. Who else is introduced? Magi. Magi. Now, Magi, again, that's a term referring to a very specific group. Magic. Jeez Louise, magic. That's Magi. You know, magic. that's where you get the word. Uh, you know, so the Magi introduced a very specific word, calling them kings. Uh, they really are kings, like here, yeah, right? Yeah, it makes the song better, but it's not, <laughs> we think of kings, but they really were more like wise men. Yeah, oracles, <laughs> astrologers. I'm sure they were you know. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that, absolutely. They absolutely. They considered like sorcerers? Well, in a Could sense, uh, uh, Maybe like under, a- in, in a world where, in a world, pre-rational world, where you are surrounded by mystery, and therefore a person who could manipulate the mysterious, oh, yeah. you know, oh. has power. Even though we would look at it now and say, oh, well, Rationally, I understand what he was doing, yeah. but then they that's they they didn't understand it. 
what he was doing. And therefore, the, the assumption is this person may have connections and abilities that are superhuman. So we were mystical. Listen. Yes. They thought so they were. Yeah, the, the, they this were was, and that's, that's, that, that's no, I mean, that, no criticism of them. I mean, you're living in a pre-rational well, world. You know. They probably, I mean, they did. And, Absolutely. I mean, they were smarter. You know, they yeah, that's out. right. In the strictest sense of the word, they did possess knowledge that other than yeah. the common guy didn't. That's exactly, yeah. that's exactly right. They just defined it in a different way. You, say, you know, in a different out. way. Right. You know, how they received that knowledge was viewed in a different way. Okay. It wasn't through research. It was through observation and insight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and somebody must have given them the insight to see it. Okay. So we've got, now it tells us that from the East, right, uh -huh. which is, that historically would be accurate because they're, they're Zoroastrian, so they're coming from an area called Parthia. So they are coming from, from Persia then? They're not they're, from Yes. Yeah, but the Western yeah. Europeans no, they they're coming all the way around. They're, they're, the the, in this, the, the way it's presented would be they would be coming further than just from Syria. Okay. Or from across the Jordan. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the blonde hair, he's coming long yeah. way around. Yeah. He's got to come, right, he's gotta come, he's come from well, Scandinavia. He's going, he's going yeah. west to yeah. east. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and the, uh, the, of course, the Oriental is coming from further, and the, the black one is coming from Detroit. Uh, <laughs> see, um, so we've got, they are coming, they are going to, which is hard, because <laughs> it's a long Hard way to get yeah, the long right plane here. flight, you know. So, uh, and they go where? Where are they going? Where do they go? They Bethlehem. go to Herod. Well, they go where? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. No, where? No. They don't go to Bethlehem. They go to Jerusalem. First. They go to Jerusalem. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, all we, all it says is, you <laughs> yeah. know, this idea that the star is kind of guiding them. All it says is the star was. They saw the star with its rising. rising. That's all. They saw it rising in the east. So it wasn't like like the pillar of fire in the wilderness that led the children of Israel through the desert that was in front of them. You know, this was a star they saw in the west, and they did what? Went Headed west. west. Okay, because that's, that's really, until later, that's the only way the star is mentioned. Okay, so they get to Jerusalem, which is west, west of them. Okay, now why is Jerusalem important? Because it's to see where Herod is. It's okay, it, it's, it's a king. place where Herod is hanging out because yeah. Herod is king. is king. Therefore, Jerusalem is His the is political government. capital. Government. But it's also religious. religious because religious. that's where the temple is. So it's both the religious and political center of Judea. Okay. Or what used to be Judah. Okay, so they get to this political capital, right? And the Magi, because they're following the star, but it's not resting, at, you know, they're not looking at it there and saying, oh, it's over here. You know, they get to, to, to Jerusalem and they ask a question. Now, understand, Matthew's shaping the story. Matthew isn't hiding behind a curtain taking notes. You know, he's shaping a story. What do the Magi ask Herod? Where is the... Where's the uh, king? Where's Jesus? The king of well, it's, it, okay, they ask what? Where, Where is the, king of the, the, king. the king of the Jews? Now, remember the Roman Senate made, him king made king. Herod king of the Jews. He wouldn't like you know, well, yeah. Herod had already has already done what? Killed, Killed three sons because they were he was concerned and one wife well, wait a minute. and his brother-in-law. I thought the Herod. That killed his sons was dead by now. No, 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 uh -huh. no, no. Okay. This is that's he, why he, Jesus was old. probably older okay. than. But he's pretty old. Yeah, this is at the uh, unless this is the our chronology is way off, and Jesus was an old man. You know, yeah, he was old. This was at the end of Herod. Herod doesn't have much time left, <laughs> right. and so Herod he says, "King of the Jews, Lord have mercy for Herod." What? What happens? He flips out. Rage. Yeah, well, I mean, red flags are going up. Yeah. Because he's, his, he's already killed sons to protect his position, oh. killed a wife, killed his brother in law, killed 300 military leaders. He probably you know. a tantrum. Well, he is, he is really concerned, right? Yeah, really concerned. Now, he, now the, the Magi say, you know, uh, where, uh, where is the child going to be born? Now, what is their motivation for asking? Just to. Worship. Him. Okay, they want to come and worship him, pay him mm -hmm. honor right. and and respect. 
Okay? Now, it says they observed his star, which would be an appropriate and followed. Uh, that would be an appropriate thing for a Magi to do. They were astrologers. So, saw the sign in the star, seeking this person who must be special, went west to do it. Okay? Herod re-enters the story, right? What is his response? He wants, he wants the him to find so, it. Well, find what, what, what is, well, even before that, because Matthew, again, is not is including words that are important, that we need to know. He doesn't start with Herod saying that to the wise men. What does, he, what does Matthew tell us his reaction was? Well, oh, he, well, he was the chief priest. Even before, even before. What does it what does it say right at the beginning of verse verse 3 He's disturbed He is disturbed You know he is frightened right He yeah he's, he's another king and they're going to knock off the old man Yeah two kings having two kings is having one too many Okay so he is he is frightened. He's disturbed. Now, Matthew does something really interesting after. So, Herod is disturbed. Makes sense. You know, the guy used, the Magi used, and I don't think Ma this is an accident that Matthew was shaped. He used the title that Herod carried, being king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he's frightened. Makes a lot of sense. But it's, what else does Matthew say? He's frightened. So is all Jerusalem. Yeah, all of Jerusalem is frightened. Oh, yeah. You, most of Jerusalem was frightened, right? Who knows? Pretty big power upset. <laughs> All of Jerusalem is frightened, uh, is disturbed. Not just some, not just a lot. As Matthew is writing it, I think he wants us to, again, mm -hmm. understand what he's trying to get at. Every single person in Jerusalem is frightened, upset, disturbed by this. You don't have a pocket saying, oh boy, we can finally get out from under Herod. Mm -hmm. This is good news. Everybody. Now, what is? what do you think Matthew's doing? He didn't have to do that. Well, he could have just said Herod was frightened and, and went on about that. But by including all of Jerusalem, what what is Matthew doing and what might it say about the, the people that are reading Matthew's gospel? Well, he's making it a huge event. It's, it's a huge it, event. It reminds me of, uh, I can't pronounce the, the name of the song, but in 2001, every time they saw the monolith, the song played. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, so the, something important has happened. Right. Okay. So you've got... He's setting the stage. All right. Yeah, certainly we've got something. It's important. We Man, we got a star in the sky yeah. saying it's important. This is a cosmic yeah. event, mm -hmm. right? Okay. What else might it be doing? Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. You you are no, doing it so be, well it as might. as good rational people. That's we now live let's in a let's think about age. what Matthew. Did they well, see the star too? All of the people. Uh, no, well, no, well, no, no. Don't to worry them all. Well, when, what, they wouldn't all study, be studying the stars, well, so they wouldn't. No, but if you saw this bright star, one of the one of the things. Well, remember, they don't feel frightened until. The king's king. The magi comes. Yeah. You know. Okay. One of the things that you see, I think you see in Matthew's gospel, and one of the reasons why he takes such uh, uh, he, he care in citing Judaism is I think Matthew is writing to a community where where you have Jewish Christians, Christians that are influenced by Judaism, and they're at a time when there's really a struggle within Judaism itself, or at least in this community. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. there's a real struggle between uh, two, two sides. Is, is Judaism going to become Messiah Judaism, Messianic Judaism, focused on Christ? Whether Judaism is going to become Christian? All the Jews, all Jews are going to become Christian. Their Messiah has come. Is that the direction it's going to help move? Mm -hmm. Who's pushing? Who's going to be pushing in in that direction? Who stands with that group? Matthew. Matthew is standing with the group of Jews that say the future of Judaism is Jesus Christ. But you've got another group within Judaism that are saying, no, 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 no. no. 
the future of Judaism by this, by Matthew's time, is going to be Pharisaic. You know, focus on the law, focus on little communities, sort of isolated, inward, focused. I think Matthew's writing to a community that is struggling, uh, that sees itself struggling for the very heart of Judaism. And right here, the fact that he has all the Jews, all the people of Jerusalem with Herod, they are the ones who are on this side of the divide. You know, that's why it's total. So we don't have a break yet because Jesus hasn't come. Okay? All right. But be that as it may, everybody in Jerusalem is right. Now, I just find it interesting why he would include that, you know, if he didn't have a real purpose in doing it. There must be a reason why. Anyway, so Herod, they're all concerned. What does Herod do? What's the first thing he does before he does anything else? He does what? He calls together the chief priests and he calls together some of them. No, he calls together all of them again. So we've got this, this totality. Everybody. He calls all the chief priests and all the scribes. They're the ones that know the law because they write. They're the ones that write. And, mm-hmm. and what does he do? What does he want from him? To, know where to tell yeah, me where, where, been, where, that Messiah. where the Messiah, the Christos, the Christ, is going to be born. <coughs> now, Matthew has pushed us in an interesting direction. You know, in a very subtle way. What has Matthew as a writer done for us right here? He's letting us know that Herod knows that this is the one. Yes, and he's done, and because Herod knows it, he knows it because of the kings, which means what the wise men are seeking is, is the Christos, is the Christ, is the Christ. Christ, yes. is the Christ. That's what he's done. And he's done it without just blatantly saying it. He's just done it by writing. You know, so Herod knows, we're going to believe Herod here. You know, that Herod is, because the, the priests and all the scribes, what do they say to Herod? Because Herod wants to know where, uh, inquires about where this guy is going to be born. Mm-hmm. What does the... Uh, no, they don't know. Well, they do know. Yeah, well, Bethlehem. Bethlehem. yeah. they say he's they, he's going to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Now, again, this is typical Matthew. You see this all over the place in Matthew. Why is it going to be in Bethlehem? The prophet said because so. Because the prophet said so. Oh. And and this is like I said, typical of of Matthew. If this had been in Luke, it probably if this story had been in Luke, probably wouldn't have included because the prophet say. Because everybody who read it would have known when, uh, what the prophet said. But he's writing to an audience that doesn't know that. So he's got to say, understand, born in Bethlehem, because the prophet, and does anybody know what prophet says that? Mm-hmm. Micah. Micah, yeah. It's, uh, it's from the prophet Micah. Says Bethlehem is going to be the place for this this great leader. Now understand when Micah, and Micah is, is an early, early prophet. He's, he's a prophet before the northern kingdom is, is taken. So he is really an early, one of the early prophets. Uh, the, the leader, again, prophets are speaking to the people of their time. Christians will take that message and say it applies to them, but it also applies to us. So the leader Micah is talking about is a leader in his context. But Christianity is going to take it in a, and, and sort of project it out. Okay, so anyway, we don't care about that because what has Matthew told us? The Messiah is going to come from Bethlehem, from Bethlehem right? Because that's what Matthew wants us to know, and this is grounded in the Old no, Testament. Testament. So now we, the reader, know that what the kings are seeking is, is the Christ. The Christ. Herod knows it. Yeah. All of Jerusalem knows it now. It is established in the Old Testament, right? All right. What does Herod then do? What? Slick. Herod Lying is really leader. slick. Lying leader to the public. Yeah. He says, well, he 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 he, 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 so he says to the wise man, what? Well, I want to pay homage. Yeah, let me know. Because he knows what? He knows the location now. Yeah. He knows that it's going to be in Bethlehem. You know, but there are a lot of people in Bethlehem. Tell me when you saw the star. 
when you saw the star. So he tells them, go to Bethlehem, tell, tell me when you saw the star, okay? What is that going to give him? Timeline. It's going to give him a timeline. Because Herod is, is also being kind of an astrologer. Yeah. The assumption is the sign appeared. So between that date and well, this can date. Ask and him, this yeah. date, yeah, is when, well, he can this, ask child his when this child would have been born. Somewhere in that time frame, it's going to tell him how old. Which is right? interesting, mm -hmm. too, because we always get the impression that they saw the star and walked a couple of days and it was fresh. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's it. And there he's at the manger. And, yeah, 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 he's a little baby. Years, and, yeah. yeah, and, and shepherds are there, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. the same night. Yeah, exactly. you, know, the, the, you know, all of a sudden, all show up. Sudden, that's, that's right. Because, of course, in Matthew, <laughs> Matthew's account, where are the shepherds in Matthew's account? I didn't hear any. They're you don't hear any because yeah. they don't exist yeah. in Matthew's account. There are no shepherds in Matthew and Kevin. Where are the kings in Luke's account? There are no kings in Luke's account. You know, now just file that away. The first people who see Jesus in Matthew are these wise, wise men, these magi, with these incredibly expensive gifts. They are the first ones to visit Jesus in Matthew. Nobody else comes before them. The first ones to visit Jesus in Luke are... Shepherds. 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 Think about the, the contrast in social position mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. political position and wealth and power. Mm -hmm. But remember in Luke, Mary says, my son is going to do what? Pull the mighty from their thrones and exalt the lowly. You know, so Luke's, it's very consistent that the first people who see the Messiah are a bunch of shepherds. And Matthew doesn't have Jesus pulling down the mighty. The first ones who see him in G in in Matthew are the mighty, the, the mighty, or the or the mighty, the most educated. Just because Matthew is working on something else, not working on the same agenda as Luke. Okay, so Herod says this. You know, tell me when uh, when he appeared. Evidently, they must. No. Well, they must tell him. Oh. You know, they tell him. Well, later, Matthew says, they told him yeah. when they saw the star. Yeah. And, and then Herod says, because now he can, he's got a list, right? He knows the location. Check. He knows the age. Check. Now, if he can get this last bit of information, man, he is in Fat City. What does he say to the Magi? Go. Go to Bethlehem, find him, find him and then back. tell me, give me his address. I got a, a GPS. I'll punch in the address and I'll go right to his house. And yeah, I want to go and worship him. You know? And the wise men say, okay. Well, uh, they, they don't does it that, does uh, well, they don't it does it but they 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 yeah, hear it yeah you know so you assume they think it well and they, they set they, off because they mm -hmm. dream they, it later they have to be warned later yeah, yeah okay warned. they set off something's really interesting though when they set off again yeah. because Herod says go to Bethlehem you're gonna find it don't they yeah. go in a different direction well they, no? later. But what does it say? What does Matthew say when they set off again? So they know exactly where to go, right? Mm -hmm. There are road signs. Right. This way to Bethlehem. <laughs> you know, they've got little maps. But, you know, there's a way to Bethlehem. they got all that stuff. And Bethlehem's pretty close to Jerusalem. Yeah, star, but star, the, star, the star, star appears again. Yeah, nice now, why would Matthew... This is not necessary, right? Yeah. The, star does, the star hasn't shown up since, since the rising. Well, yeah. Now it shows up again. What is Matthew doing by having the star show up again? It's telling you it's Reinforcing the point. Yeah. Also, taking, taking Herod out. Because who is really in control of the story? Man. Not Herod giving the information. Man, the Magi, sorry. Jesus. No. Jesus and God. God. God is the one. The one who puts the symbol in the sky is the one in charge. Those Magi do not need Herod to find the, the, the one they're seeking. They don't need They could find him without Herod. Now, they need to go to Herod because if they don't go to Herod, the rest of it can't happen. You know, but... They go to they, Herod is not well, essential to the story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God is essential. So they find they the star appears again, and it stops. Now the star is leading them, mm -hmm. and they are. And we're talking about 
like a day's walk. So we're not talking about this was hundreds and hundreds of miles. This is like in a suburb wow. of, of Jerusalem. Bethlehem and Jerusalem are really, really close. So Herod it, was close to him. Herod's really close. Yeah. All right. They are overwhelmed with joy on um, what do they do when they get to Bethlehem? They do something, really, that's kind of surprising. They sell the child and the mother and they fell on their knees. It's, that's true. What do they do before they see the child and, the, and his mother? What does it say in verse 11 they were that they joyed. do? They were filled with joy. Yeah, filled right? With joy. They're really happy. And so we've got, they're really happy. They see the child and his mother. There's something in between. There's no the star there. What do they do? They worshipped him. They okay, him to the that's over here. They go into the what? The What's that? They go into the they house. Go into the house. They yeah. Whoa! That's they go into a, a house. Barn, yeah. What the heck is going on here? No manger. No manger. They, do, no they should manger. be going into a barn, barn or a cave. He's like two years old by this point. You know, ah. He's already out of here also becomes really interesting because when we look at Luke's story where does Mary and and what we looked at last week where do Mary and Joseph evidently live? Nazareth. They live in Nazareth right? Because they're in Nazareth in Galilee the, the tax they got to go to this city they travel to Bethlehem Jesus is born in a manger and after he's born in a manger they do what? They must buy a house and move into a house. Uh-uh. Not in Luke. They do what? They go back to Nazareth. Because that's where Joseph lives. He's got a house in Nazareth. He's got his business. Jesus is from Nazareth, right? Ah, oh, but not here. Yeah. It would appear, since Matthew has nothing about this taxation, has no prior history about Matthew or Joseph and Mary, other than what we've read, it would appear as though what? They stayed, stayed in Jerusalem. Not only or stayed, they live, or they live there. Would appear in Matthew that Mary and Joseph live where? In Bethlehem. in Bethlehem. That's going to be reinforced a little bit later. But this is where they live. This is where they have their house. Mm -hmm. So Matthew and Luke are working. Their stories are slightly different. Which means they're drawing from different traditions. One isn't right and the other wrong, unless we're going to get all bent out of shape about historicity. We're, they're telling the story in, in slightly different ways. The bottom line is Jesus is going to end up in Nazareth. He's just going to get there in a little different way, according to <coughs> Matthew. Okay, so they go into the house. Therefore, maybe it'd be good if we separated the Magi from the shepherds. You know, because they have really two different stories going on here. So they enter the house, and what do they do when they enter the house? They fall on their knees. They fall on the knees and pay him homage, homage which is what they were supposed to, what yeah. they wanted to do anyway. And and then what do they do? They give him the gifts. They give him the gifts. Mm -hmm. Now this is why you got three kings, because they brought three gifts. Three gifts. Three gifts. Now could two kings have brought three gifts? Yeah. Sure. Two could gifts. eighteen yeah. kings bring two three gifts? Yeah. Sure. You know, but. Three gifts, three kings makes it nice. Yeah, it okay. It's a song. Yeah, yeah, but yeah it makes a song. They'd already written the song. Mm -hmm, yeah. right. You know, what are you yeah. going to do? Yeah. Um, can't change the words. Yeah, can't yeah. change the words to the song. Everybody was singing it. And does not three to prime number again? Yes, that's right. The, so the gifts themselves, the fact that we've got three becomes significant just in and of itself. Because three is considered a holy number. Oh, yeah. uh, the ancient people loved prime numbers. They just couldn't get enough of them. And, and so prime numbers are always important. Three was a holy number. Four was an earthly number. So if, if you see anything as a four, if there are four <laughs> horsemen of the apocalypse, mm -hmm. you know, where do, they do, where do they cause trouble? On earth. On earth. Mm -hmm. Why would four be an earthly number? Because it's divided by two. Yeah, well, north, oh, south, east, east, west. You know, four points. A good earthly number. It's not prime. Uh, three is a prime is a two. prime is a holy number. This this tri so three gifts. So these gifts must be significant. We know that they're significant mm -hmm. before we even open them. Mm -hmm. You know, open the 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 gold. He says, "Hot dog! I got a bunch of gold." Mm -hmm. 
Yes. What does it? What would gold symbolize? Wealth. 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 Yeah. Authority, yeah. Authority yeah. power. Mm -hmm. Life. King. Yada Trans yada 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 yada. Yes, yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Okay. Then the other two were kind of bizarre, mm -hmm. you know, because they opened another one, and although Maggie had a baby shower, when Maggie had a Ma Debbie had a baby shower, somebody brought frankincense. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, you know, they brought frankincense. Um, fr Frankincense. What's frankincense? It's, it's, it's incense. 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 You know, there was a resin, you know, that you you could burn in the temple. And and opened myrrh. Well, that's because it did take baths. Yeah. And, and myrrh, myrrh has a has a that's several dead bodies. Right? Yeah, it's a perfume. Yeah, that you around yeah well because why would you put perfume on a dead body they stink they smell. yeah it's, it's it's not good myrrh also was a was a narcotic oh and and that's why it shows up in the story it was used in medicine it was a, sort of a narcotic and that's why it shows up in the story of uh, the crucifixion and it is they mix myrrh with wine and give it to Jesus, and that's what oh, they would do. To to yeah, the yeah, relieve the pain, yeah. so he doesn't go into shock. Yeah. If he goes into shock, he dies. Yeah, you do. know, so they don't want him going into they shock. They want him to live long. as long as he can. And so myrrh shows up here, but it, in both cases, we've got an association with death. Actually, it is not. Its primary use isn't an embalming. It's really it's a perfume. It's not an it's embalming different. thing. But it's it's associated ends up being associated with Jesus' death in two ways. Mm -hmm. So we've got these highly symbolic gifts that point towards prophecy, Yeah, it becomes prophecy. And this is what I think Matthew intends. You know, the gifts we've got three dimensions of Jesus that become really important. Okay, so this this all happens, you know, nice time, open yeah, the, gifts. the gifts. I mean, yeah. if they didn't have the gifts, they couldn't leave to go to Egypt. They would have been penniless. And well. I mean, you get a, you get a, a hunk of, of, coal, of gold, man, you can go somewhere. Get a hunk of coal, you just cook on a farm. Right, right, right. I mean, you can't do anything with the, right. the other... Uh, well, I guess Martha Well, actually, it, actually, it ends up that both are incredibly valuable. Yeah, you know, both I were mean, really there, valuable. There were uh, uh, liquid means of mm -hmm. getting uh, monetary funds to so somewhere. L liquidity. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Okay, that's good. That's a good point. That's I mean, a real that's good point. A good point. But is there any indication that that's the reason for the gifts? Well, no, no. I, 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 it's like not that. the reason for the gifts. No, I'm just yeah. saying yeah. they yeah. wouldn't be able to have yeah. that opportunity. Well, yeah, yeah. Have liquid, yeah. If if if, the if that were the reason, they would have slipped him a couple of bucks too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> or a camel. You know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If they didn't give them cattle, they that's right. That's that's right. If you get if you have a camel, and it's important to understand, back then smoking was more acceptable. Uh, the um, okay, so we um, thank you, Rick. I really appreciate that. some of us aren't because old nobody to no. That. I mean, it was just it was just nothing, and I heard crickets right. chirping, and it was sad. It took a second, and but it was yeah, fun. It and was and, fun. and you you know it's when last week when you go wah wah, <laughs> you know that's what I would say wah wah. Okay, so we've got and they what happens to the magi? They, they, they go home a different way because yes, they got they an angel yes well yeah. I, I, they were warned in a dream gee have we seen dreams before uh, yes I bet we have because Joseph had a dream okay so before alright so they go back now so we're done with the, the Magi that gone out of the story in chapter 2 verses 13 15 through 15 uh, now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Now, that's kind of interesting, because we find that also mentioned where? Nowhere! It's nowhere mentioned at all that Joseph and Mary are supposed to go to... Egypt. Egypt. This is kind of odd, right? Because there's a lot uh -huh. of places they could have gone. In Exodus, they left Egypt. Oh, thank back. you, Jean. We're talking about. So oh, we're so talking about obvious. something symbolic here, because Always. he could have. A Jew's got to go back. Ah, <laughs> we've got because he could have said go, go go east, follow the wise men go back the to the east. Yeah. You know, they will protect you, or or go north. You know, to another territory. You know. <laughs> 
I said the wise guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were. Oh, you know, Forget about it. They it's made Jesus an all of a good review. All right. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, we'll take care of it. Uh, the, uh, so, but going to Egypt, man, tell me that's not loaded. That's, I mean, and that's not an easy trip. You know, the angel didn't do him any favors by having him trudge across the Sinai Desert to get to Egypt. There are closer places than that, like crossing the Jordan, you know, but because of the symbolism involved. And we're going to see that a little bit later. So he, uh, the, Joseph, because the angel says in a dream, take what does Joseph do? Because he's a good, righteous person. He, good. Takes he goes. He okay. And he goes to Egypt. So the prophet can be fulfilled. Ah, so the prophecy can be fulfilled. Again, this is typical Matthew. You know, since you don't understand it, my audience, I'm going to tell you the prophet said it. And not only is he going to say that the prophet said it, he's going to say what the prophet said. Out of Egypt I've called my son. Now where is this coming from? Genesis, for crying out loud. What son is coming from Egypt? Jesus. Moses. Yeah, Moses is coming to you. File that away. File that away. We got a little parallel here working with Jesus and Moses. He's going to call his son out of Egypt. So somehow Jesus has got to get to Egypt, which he does here. Now, Jesus is in Egypt, right? Okay, Herod knows location and he knows age, but he doesn't know address, right? Mm -hmm. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was not <laughs> the wise, I'm now thinking, well, tricked by the wise guys, uh, <laughs> he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under according to the time when he, uh, he had learned from the wise men. Uh, then it, it was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, not the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah uh, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they were no more. Okay, what uh, Herod returns to the story, right? Wise men are gone. Herod returns. He is mad, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, that was pretty good. <laughs> I, it, it strikes me that's sort of like Coco being <laughs> mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Me. Yeah, it scared you. But, wow. <laughs> that's <laughs> very low threshold there. Uh, all right. So he's he's really really mad, and and what does he what does he decide to do? What is he going to do? Who, Herod? Herod. Eliminate, Herod. eliminate the king. Eliminate the, the king, and he's going to do it by killing everybody. By killing everybody. Killing all the children under two years old. All right. Now, why does he do it? Because he's afraid. He, he wants to be king of the Jews. He doesn't want someone else being king of the Jews. He's he wants his kids to be. Why does he do it? Because he's crazy, he's too. To fulfill the prophecy. Ah! Thank you, Rick, to fulfill the prophecy. You know, because this is what he does. You know, it's it's all through this. Everything that happens fulfills some prophecy. Now, understand when Jeremiah is writing, the Babylonians are besieging. When he writes this, besieging Jerusalem, killing people right and left. He is writing about what? About, who? about what's going on in no. his time when the yeah. Babylonians are killing Jews. But Christians, again, take this and say it applies here, but it also can apply here, you know, that this is what's happening. You know, that Rachel is crying for her children. Jews are being slaughtered in Bethlehem. Now, in terms of historicity, Josephus was a good historian and liked to write a lot of detail and took a particular interest in Herod. This doesn't appear in, in Josephus' writing. Hmm. doesn't appear, but we're not going to worry about that because Matthew has included it, and he included it for a reason. Now, what, as you read this story about Herod killing the children around Bethlehem, 
them that have read the Bible before Rams. are experiencing, yes, are experiencing deja vu all over again. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened where? In Egypt, Egypt. Mm -hmm. when the Rose. children are, the boys are, Killed. Now, born. killed. Oh. That's right. Or killed for a different reason. You know what? You know the different reason. They. This was population control yeah. for the Egyptians. You know that's what was going on with Egypt. This isn't population control. This is to get rid. Too many Jews were being. And if you read the Exodus story, Jewish women were having kids right and left. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it was really ticking off the Egyptians because they thought, oh, we're going to be so buried by. By Jews, well, then not you know. Stop it. Well, they stood. They were going to Can't stop they? it by killing the firstborn. That'll That's cut them down. Rolls. You know. I think of that <laughs> that Simpson line where they say we need another Vietnam. <laughs> thin out their ranks a little yeah, bit. Thin out their ranks. <laughs> uh, so the. Uh, you know, that's what he's doing, is reducing the population. But this is a different, but it's the same kind of story. We've got an evil king doing what? Killing children. Killing children. Yeah. Ooh. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Ooh. That, that wait, wait. Me. Yeah, it reminds me. <laughs> Jesus is in Egypt. Egypt. Ooh, that's interesting. We've got a story about a crazy king killing children. Ooh, that sounds like a story from the Old Testament. Hmm. That's kind of fascinating. Yeah. And then it says in, in chapter, again, chapter 2, verse 16 through 18, when Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Is that a surprise that an angel appears no. to Joseph in a dream? No. This is the third time it's happened, you know, in less than two chapters. Okay, that's the way. And the angel says what? Go back home now. Get up and go <laughs> Because the person who is seeking to kill the child is dead. dead. And because Joseph is really, really obedient, he does what? He gets up and goes back to the land of Israel. Now this is really neat. Because he calls it Israel. Was anybody calling this the land of Israel at this time? No. Israel didn't exist. It's the land of Judea. That's what it's called. But he calls it Israel because he's giving us what? What does he get? What is he giving us? What's your your line? A dope slap. A dope slap. <laughs> and saying this story has to do with Israel. Now, who is Israel? The twelve tribes. Israel's twelve tribes. Israel is they're the children of Jacob, right? Because Jacob was renamed Israel. You know. So this is what is what is Matthew? So he comes back. To the land. What is Matthew doing here? He's, he's reuniting the tribes. Well, he's reuniting the tribes, yes, and doing something even more exciting than just reuniting the tribes. Creating a nation. Well, he's cre yes, even more exciting than that, or more interesting than that. He's taking the history of Israel, this pivotal point in the history of Israel, and doing what with it? Bring it forward. Applying right. it Today. to Jesus. He's taking this history, this exodus, and applying, it, and to applying it to Jesus. So Jesus as a person encompasses Israel. Israel. Wow. You know, that's really kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he goes to Egypt just like Jacob. You know, jo the story of Joseph. You know, Jacob goes to, to Egypt. He leaves Egypt, just like the children of Israel, leave Egypt and come to the promised land, right? That's all part of the story. Mm -hmm. And we've got this, this added story of a mad king killing kids, which sure sounds like the story of Moses. And it's what we're going to see when we look at, at uh, Matthew, as opposed to Mark and Luke and John, is he's going to... Jesus is going to be compared to Moses over and over again. Where does Jesus in the in the Gospel of Matthew? I mean, you don't even know that is need to know that it's in Matthew. Where does Jesus teach his definitive lesson? The Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Mount. On the Mount, um, right? He teaches his big defendant in Matthew. In Luke, he does the same thing, but in Luke says he's on the plane. Because Luke doesn't care about mountains. 
but Matthew does. So Jesus preaches this, teaches this definitive lesson on the mountaintop. Well, you got all the symbolism with the kings being high. Well, sure, sure, being sure, high, sure. Mountain being yeah. High. Well, but this is I think this is a Moses kind of thing. You know, he's on the mountain. Uh, we also have in the Beatitudes, Matthew expands them to ten. <laughs> Just like Ten Commandments. If there's a fascinating verse in, in Matthew, a little passage in Matthew, where Jesus is doing healing. Where do you think Jesus is healing the lame? On the mountain. On the mountain. Now get this picture. Symbolically, makes a lot of sense because Jesus is like Moses, only greater. But he's making lame people do what? Come up a mountain. Crawl up a mountain to be healed. They have to no. suffer. Yeah. <laughs> Symbolically, it becomes important. Practically, it becomes ridiculous. But Matthew is working with the symbolism. Jesus does his greatest works on mountains. And that's why at the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, as opposed like to John, John Gospel, John, John's Gospel ends with Jesus teaching his apostles on the, on the lakeside, by the lake. Matthew ends with Jesus teaching his disciples on a mountain in Galilee. Mountains are really crucial in, in the Gospel of Matthew. And, and so, because of this parallel. Now, we've still got one issue, right? We know, according on Matthew seems to indicate that Mary and Joseph lived where? In Bethlehem. They lived in Bethlehem. Geez, they had a house. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like they went, had a baby in a manger, and said, ooh, I like it here so much, I think I'll settle down. I mean, that doesn't seem to be the case and doesn't make sense mm-hmm. in Luke, not mentioned in Luke. You know, they kind of want to get away as soon as possible. They got a house in Bethlehem. Okay, so the angel says, go back to Israel, right? All right. Joseph got up, took the child, goes back to Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And, gosh, uh, wait a minute, wait. I wonder what's going to happen to warn him. Oh, Oh, how did you guess? He has another dream. Another dream. You know, and he went to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth. Nazareth so that what was spoken by the prophets, prophets again could be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. 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 Okay. Not a Nazarite, but a Nazarene. Nazarene. Okay. So, you know, now Matthew has got Jesus in, in Galilee, in Nazareth. Same place that Luke had him, but how he gets there is slightly different. It's a lot different. different. It's a lot different. And you know what we look say to that? We don't care. Because the story has the meaning. The story is what has the meaning. That Jesus, for Matthew, is paralleling Israel. And that's why he will say, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But what Matthew's going to do is he's going to broaden Israel out. You know, he's going to broaden what Israel means out. On that mountaintop at the end. Okay, this is these are the this is the story of the Magi and and Herod. Uh, any questions about what's going on here? Uh, now I know. Yeah, and and that's why we just let this story speak. Okay. Okay. All right. There's no history behind it. It's well, it there it's it's well <laughs> we look at the story, but the story has meaning. Right. Does it have history behind it? Well, Herod was a king. Yeah, Herod, Herod was a king. They were magi. You know, it could have happened. I, I think that I think we end up wasting a lot of time when people talk about uh, comets and say, well, this was a comet. Yeah, oh, okay, that's, that's fine. Kind of but that's the story for me doesn't have meaning because somehow we can squeeze it into rational history. That's fine, but I don't care. Well, but the that, story itself has theological faith-based meaning. And I want to hear that. I want to believe that. You know, the historicity, you know, that's, you know, gravy. But, but that, I agree with you, but what is the purpose of the star? What beca- well, what becomes the purpose of the star? 
Well, it guides it, them, I understand. Well, I mean, that, what, but, but, but there was none, really. It was forever. It, that's it. You know, and I think that's, that's, that's what Matthew, I think that's what Matthew's getting at. You know, that this is a this, Luke does the same thing. You know, but a different way. Remember when the shepherds Jesus is born. And if you read Luke's story about the birth, it is super simple. Manger, you know, stable Man, this is a this is a really simple story. The shepherds get the word first. How do they get the word? They see it. An angel. They see the star. Mm-hmm. Okay. They no, they don't. They don't see a star. They get it from an angel. But what else accompanies the angel? It says it talks about the host of heaven. Yeah, yeah. Now that's the when you talk when you see host that refers to military. That's army. So it's like heaven's army appears. You know, so, and and they are announcing. So the angel comes to talks to him, and then heaven's army appears to the shepherds. Yeah, which were which were ancient aliens. You know, you know, with the R H. You know, R H. Yeah, characteristic. Yeah, it's, it's, it, this was on the mothership, and 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 they they sang the. Bum, bum, bum. That's that was the tune, you know. That's what the tune. Yeah, that's exactly the tune. And and the, but but what's what is Luke what is Luke saying? You know, cosmic. Yeah, this is a cosmic event that involves well, yeah. heaven itself. Yeah. Matthew's doing the same thing, but he doesn't have a heavenly army showing up. The, Instead, the stars are always. He's mm-hmm. got a star. Yeah, the stars He's are always star. kind of like a euphemism of heaven anyway. Yeah. So, well, they, you know, they I mean, both, mm-hmm. the best way they we can think of heaven mm-hmm. is that, I think. And they believe that God communicated mm-hmm. these stars. Yeah. And so this becomes, this. he's doing the same thing. This is a cosmic event in which heaven is involved. What's what's going to what's really interesting? And see, I love studying script. When you read when you read John in John, John seems to be aware of this bits and pieces of this, but John wants to focus. The evangelist John wants to focus on that pre-existing word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. With God, and the word was God. That that's what's important. The word became flesh. It's not how he became flesh. John John says that gets that's a distraction. Mm-hmm. How he became flesh, you don't worry about. The fact that he, he did become flesh is what's crucial. And and John will go almost out of his way to demystify this ser- story. You know, he'll say, John will say, you know, um, people will object to Jesus in John, the Gospel of John, because he came from Nazareth. And the, the response isn't, oh, he wasn't born in Nazareth. He was actually born in Bethlehem. You just don't know about this. That's not it. He says, you know, the point is, man, God can do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're you know, straining for gnats. You're missing the big picture. You know, the word became flesh. It doesn't matter where he came from. It doesn't matter who his parents were. Yes. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that word existed from the very beginning. And so John... John doesn't want us to get distracted by the details of a birth story. He wants to 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 focus on Jesus as God, as God in human flesh. And so we're we're talking about something very, very different. Now is one wrong and the other right? Well, of course they're not. You know, you're talking about different dimensions of who Jesus Christ is. And that's and the early church knew that. So an ancient people knew that, and that's why they put in four Gospels that they know they knew didn't perfectly complement one another, fit together. But they had all four in there, because those four tell a full story of who Jesus is. You know, even though it's not they're not identical, they give these dimensions, all of which are are true, and that's what I find exciting. You know, that it's not just one Gospel. Is, is four. Okay, next week we're going to look at, we're going to shift. Ready to shift? Mm-hmm. I got six speeds. So. Okay, we're ready to shift. We are going to look at, no. should Religious be a little similar. We're going to look at Christian denominations. parts of Christianity. And we're going to start by looking at Oh, oh, good. Thank you. Uh, we're going to start by looking at uh, <laughs> Roman Catholicism.
So we're going to look at the fundamental beliefs of Roman Catholicism. Okay. okay. And then we'll look at Eastern Orthodoxy, and then we'll start going into the 5,000 different little Protestant groups. Uh, you know. 5,000. 5,000. But what we're going to find, what we're going to find is, and, and this is, I think this is also cool. Uh, I believe when I am in front of God, and God looks down at me. He, I, I hope he's looking down at me. Uh, I, I, he is probably going to say, uh, you know, he's trying. Uh, he's he's going to say, you know, you, you got, you got some of it right, but what, what you don't realize is I had to really dumb it down for you because you just weren't able to get it because uh, you, we all know you weren't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And, uh, I mean, you weren't exactly an archaeologist or an ancient alien. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, uh, I had to dumb it way down for you. Uh, I think that's what, what we're going to see as we look at these different, these different groups within Christianity is they, are all, they all make sense in the historical context, the historic context in which they will rise. And, in fact, if there was any other if it, if it took any other form, it really wouldn't make sense. So it's it's not a matter that this is right and this is wrong. And there are going to be things that you might I, I don't agree with, you know, that I think is a bad interpretation, you know. But um, or not a great interpretation in the historical context in which they appear, it makes absolute and total sense. Okay, and that's so. That's what we're gonna. I, I, that I want you to have that in the back of your mind. It's not. I don't want you to think that we're gonna come in and I'm gonna say, oh, let's trash everything other than, oh, no. because it's not. It's they all make complete and absolute sense in their context. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this time together, and thank you for helping us better understand these folks around the manger. Uh, enable us to take their examples and apply them to our lives. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All right.